Morning, YouTubers. This video is a follow-up video to my part four that I just released. Basically, I was too lazy to go in and edit that video and add this, and it was already long enough, so I figured I would shoot this follow-up video where we talk about some of the results that I found. So my recommendation, watch part four, then come watch this video. It'll make a lot more sense. So anyways, in that video, I ran into an issue where when welding quarter inch thick steel, my first pass, which I'll show you right here, and this was with the US forge wire. Let me bring that up real close. See all that porosity is really bad. And I think that was my second pass. My first pass wasn't really much better. Yeah, I mean, there's porosity all over the weld. I did a cut and etch, let me bring that in for you. And there's visible porosity over here. Just wasn't good. So I'm like, huh, that's interesting. The scientist in me said, well, why don't I try some stuff? So same wire, same settings. I ran a circle E pattern rather than just going straight in and dragging it. And this weld has no evidence at all anywhere of porosity so then i said huh okay and i ran another pass on the back sort of like just straight in and i got porosity all over it like back over here i did a cut and etch and it's going to be a little hard but there is visible porosity inside the weld on this side and the one where i did circle ease came out clean and I got to thinking about that, like, well, why would that be? I mean, flux core wires rated to much thicker plate than this. I mean, five sixteenths anyways. It's like, is there a settings issue? I just was, I guess, dumbfounded as to why that would be. So I decided to swap out the US Forge wire and go with the Lincoln. And then I ran another weld let me see which one so here's the first this is just straight in with no oscillation now you can tell like my travel speed kind of sucked here there's a little bit of porosity right there but overall like it looks a lot better and mind you this is the exact same bar of steel that all of these were cut through the prep was the same no difference and then look at this so I started right here. This isn't porosity, by the way, it's just a couple BBs. And just ran it straight in, no oscillation. The weld turned out, I mean, pretty much perfect, other than when I got to the end and this plate was hung over a little bit and it blew out and there's a little bit of porosity there. But yeah, I mean, this wire, this Lincoln wire seems to run a lot better from what I'm seeing here. And I also went and just ran a couple beads on thicker scrap steel I have laying around. And I had really no evidence of porosity at all. So I got to thinking about why that might be. And one of the things, and I had brought it up in the previous video. These are E71T-GS wires. These wires are not to be used for multiple pass welds. And not only that, but the code compliance of this for certain things basically it's non-compliant lincoln's is and what that really means is is that the lincoln wire the flux composition and the material alloy that the wire is made out of along with the testing of it has proven that it's compliant with a specific code well what i'm thinking might be going on and again this is you know far above my understanding of welding and, and metal but when i thinned the weld out here i didn't have an issue i'm thinking what's going on is the flux composition in this us forge wire when you run a really thick weld it's either a difference in flux that's causing the issue between this and the lincoln wire or it could be the ratio of metal to flux when you try and weld a single pass weld on thicker steel like this that there's an issue where 
the ratio is wrong and it just there's so much gas built up in the weld that it can't escape with a thicker weld and that by thinning it out by doing circle E's where the the weld if you look here oop not that one here it is now I mean it's kind of hard to sell to see but the weld on this one I did the circle E's thinned out a little bit in the throat and simply by doing that, it gave time for the gas to escape versus running it straight in. The, the weld was so thick that it didn't give the time for the gas to escape, which causes surface porosity. I don't know. It's a thought. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this Lincoln wire here. I'm going to cut it in half and then etch it. And we're going to see if there's any evidence of porosity in it. Well, I got this all etched. So... Just cut it in half with a grinder, polished it a little bit, etched it. It's not as good of a polish as I should have had, but let's get in here and let me wipe this down a little bit just so you can see it a little bit better. Uh, let me wipe it a little bit more. There we go. Don't mind the discoloring on the left side. So the first pass, there's some porosity in there. You can see the little dots right at the surface. And it didn't seem like it bit in that well down here. I mean, it's past the... Let me back this up a little bit. Maybe I can... There we go. It's past the root, but not by much. And the settings I ran this wire at were pretty much the same as yesterday's test part four. Yeah, and you can see the porosity. Now... This was a lot to do with me. My travel speed just wasn't that smooth. And this plate was also cold. So when I ran it on it hot, overall, with the plate hot, it welded a lot better. The hotter preheated side has better penetration in the root by a little bit. And... Overall, I mean, it just looks, it looks like a 7018 bead. It looks a lot better. So I think what's going on is it's a combination of things. I think the flux and wire setup of the U.S. Forge with a 125 amp welder just isn't really going to work for a single pass weld on something this thick with old 3 old wire unless you try and thin the wire out, or excuse me, Thin the weld out a little bit. The Lincoln overall, if I had to weld quarter inch thick, based on what little tests I get on scrap in this, I would definitely take the Lincoln wire for thicker metal with a 125 amp machine. Now, if I had a 140 plus amp machine, I would be curious to see what the difference would be with this particular wire if it would actually, if we're running up against an issue of just not having enough heat which honestly I think is, has a lot to do with it. But running uh, 030 wire on quarter inch thick steel, I don't know that you'd really want to do that. You'd probably want to switch to 035 realistically. But yeah, anyways, that's what I found. I think it's interesting. If you guys have any other theories or comments on why you think this might be going on, I'm all ears. I mean, I understand that flex core wire, the gasless as self-shield is not known to produce that great of welds. I mean, it's very serviceable. That little bit of porosity on this side isn't going to cause the weld to fail. I mean, re realistically, for stuff you're building at home. Now, would I want that on a space shuttle? Definitely not. Or an airplane, even though those are all aluminum, definitely not. But for home hobbyists, not really an issue. It's just something to think of. I guess, leave me your comments. Thanks.